What's up gamers, Russ Lyman here and welcome back to another Top 3 Tuesday. We're going to be talking about the Nintendo Wii, my top 3 favorite Wii games. Now of course there's a ton of games on the Wii that are great and yeah, let's be honest, there's a lot of shovelware as well. So with this list, I'm not going to include the Mario games, the games that you would already know are great. Mario Galaxy, Mario Kart, Smash Brothers, all those are great games. I'm going to try to give you guys some games that maybe you haven't heard of or thought maybe they were bad. So coming in at number three, number three, we got Punch-Out for the Wii. Now the original Punch-Out was released on NES in October 1987 and followed up on Super Nintendo Super Punch-Out. Came out in October 94. It was then 15 years till we would get another entry in this series. Skipping the N64 and GameCube release. Punch-Out for the Wii came out in May 18th, 2009. I was super hyped for this game when I saw the trailer for it and I really enjoyed the previous games. I love the look of the new graphics and I ended up heading to my local GameStop and pre-ordering the game. When this game finally came out, I couldn't wait to get home and give it a shot and well see what it was about. They had all the characters from both Punch-Out games. You could also play the game with the Wiimote sideways like it was an NES controller or use the motion controls. Apparently it also works with the Wii balance board but I never had one of those so couldn't try it out. IGN rated it 8.8 .8 out of 10. Now this game is great with charm and fan service. The gameplay is still the same with dodging, low punches, high punches, and collecting stars to get a super uppercut. But they now have fun stills of the fighters before a match to act as a quick backstory of the character giving you some insight on them. Glass Joe has to hold up a baguette to be like, uh -huh -huh, he's a French. They use those stereotypical ideas with other things, like when the character gets dizzy, icons will surround his head. Like with King Hippo, it's pineapples, but Piston Honda, it's sushi rolls. Eh, only Nintendo could get away with something like that. But like I said, this game has charm and it's super fun to play. This game uses motion controls to control Little Mac letting you actually toss punches and dodge them by swaying side to side, giving you that almost real life boxing experience, or at least a fun workout. So I was out thrifting one day and found at Savers a pair of boxing gloves that were for the Wii. You would slip the Wii motes into the gloves and punch like normal, except now you're more fit for the part. So they're made by Everlast. They came in this little mesh case. You would just unzip them, hook the remotes up to it, and now you can get into the action of the game. February 2014, Little Mac was announced as the 23rd character confirmed for the Super Smash Bros. Wii U and 3DS version. And with that, he also got his own amiibo figure. This has brought some new hype back into the character and franchise, so we can hopefully see a Switch release of the new Punch-Out game maybe in the future. But for now, we can always go back and give this the old one-two punch. Well, if boxing isn't your game and you want an adventure style game, coming in at number two, number two, everyone's favorite bounty hunter, Samus in Metroid Other M. Released August 2010, the story opens up with the ending of Super Metroid in a cinematic cutscene that looks awesome. It shows the baby Metroid with Samus and Mother Brain wreaking havoc. After that, you get woken up in a space base, and this is where it gives you a quick tutorial on the controls of the game. You play the game by holding the Wiimote sideways, kind of like you're playing the old school NES or SNES Metroid games. While the Metroid Prime series was in first person, this was a third person game. And I've been waiting for this game for a long time, being a bigger fan of the third person style Metroid games. 
I got the first Prime when it came out, but never beat it and couldn't really get into it. I was happy I could finally play a new third-person Metroid game. Now I know a lot of the internet loves to hate this game. Although it got a Metacritic score of 70% and IGN rated it 8.5 out of 10. Most say the story makes Samus out to be some weakling character. While I agree the backstory isn't the absolute best, I'm all about the gameplay and look. This certainly nails it, I think, on that. The atmospheres look great and detailed, from water-filled caverns to snowy ice levels, all taking place on a space station that seems endless. All of Samus's upgrades are back like the dash boots, screw attack, power bombs, charge shot, and more. You can now dodge out of the way of enemy attacks, making an onslaught attack on Samus easier to handle. Although this is 2D style game, you interact with the world in three dimensions, having the camera angle change depending on where you're taking Samus. I put about 11 hours into this game back in the day and I definitely couldn't put the controller down and enjoyed every minute of it. I really want to go back and give it another go because I recently picked up the strategy guide and I want to try to find all the weapons and extra items. I'm only 70% complete with the game. And I certainly remember getting to the end of the game, or at least near the end, and it being about midnight. I had to stay up late till I beat the game, and I think I shut the system off around 3 a.m. It was everything I was waiting for in a Metroid game. The only next time I got this hyped was when I heard they were remaking Metroid 2 for the 3DS system. And again, I wasn't let down with that one either. So take it from a Metroid fan and don't listen to what everyone is saying. Make your own opinion on this game and give it a go. Give it a few hours of your time. Heck, what else are you going to do while we're waiting for Metroid Prime 4 to come out? Rated T for Teen. And well, before we get to my number one, I like to mention some honorable mentions on the Wii because there are a lot of great games that people don't know about. I definitely enjoy the Resident Evil rail shooter games, the Umbrella Chronicles and Dark Side Chronicles. These are great fun games you can play at short bursts or play with a friend. I definitely had a buddy over. We had some good times just shooting up the zombies. And I also streamed this and had a great time interacting with everyone. Another game is this Batman the Brave and Bold. Based on the cartoon series, this is a fun beat-em-up style game. There are cutscenes that look like they're lifted straight from the cartoon. And again, this is two-player action, so you could grab a friend and have some fun. You get to unlock different characters that you can play as and have characters that help you, kind of like a special move, so they'll jump on screen. And the dialogue is great. Voice acting is all top-notch. Definitely check this one out. So coming in at number one, while it's not a Mario game, it's kind of in the vein of that. And that's... Number one! Wario Land. Shake it. Oh. This game came out on July 24th, 2008 for the Nintendo Wii. And this game stars Mario's other arch nemesis, Wario. It is the first Wario Land game to be released on home video game console and succeeds Wario Land 4, which was released in 2001. Shake It is a side-scrolling platformer game, and you take control of Wario, who travels to the Shake Dimension that is broken up into five distinct continents, each of which offers up to six sequential levels, defeating the bosses in each of them. The game is played by holding the Wii Remote horizontally and makes use of the controller's motion control features. Having you tilt the remote to throw enemies, but best of all, when Wario gets a treasure in the game, you are inclined to shake your Wii Remote up and down, and Wario in the game will shake the treasure, spewing coins everywhere. You can also grab enemies and shake them as well. Besides the fun gameplay mechanics, the game also looks great as well. It went for a different style, having all the animation be hand-drawn. Just to put that in perspective of how much extra work that is, over 2,000 frames were drawn to animate over 200 actions for Wario alone, and over 6,000 frames were drawn for all the enemy characters. I think it's well worth it because it helps the game stand out in the Wii library. I remember being at GameStop looking around and seeing this game on demo on a Wii kiosk and I was blown away. 
I love that it was a 2D side-scrolling game because, well, it's just easier to play. Go left to right like an old school game. But this had so much more to offer in terms of replay value. In each level, there were three hidden treasures to find, and you could complete the three side quests for the stage as well. Some of them being beat the level in a certain time frame, collect a certain number of coins, or an odd task like jump off three enemies' heads in a row, or don't touch any enemies. This keeps you going back to get everything in each level if you want 100% the game. Now I couldn't wait for this game to come out and it was a day one purchase for me as well. I highly recommend you guys check this one out. It's definitely stand the test of time. Well guys, those were my top three Wii games that I think you guys should check out. Be sure to leave in the comments below some Wii games you think I should check out that would have made your top list. As always, hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video and consider subscribing. New videos every week. As always, gamers, I'm Russ Lyman, and keep your world fun bit by bit. I'll see you next video.